Inspector. I managed to track down Black Hole Birdie. I'm pleased to hear that. Birdie Holcomb is a valuable asset to the Rizzo's Rangers property. When Helen was murdered, Birdie was nowhere to be found. The timing of his disappearance is unfortunate. Well, wait, what should I say? Unfortunate and suspicious. This isn't a good look for Birdie. That's ominous. Ah, oh, Birdie Holcomb. How have you gone and complicated my life this time? The only person who can corroborate his whereabouts is his dealer. I wasn't aware Birdie was involved in contraband. What kind of dealer are we talking about? <laughs> Uh, well, Birdie doesn't take any, well, yeah, Birdie doesn't take company effort accelerators. He's been getting illegal supplements from a dealer. Every ranger is contractually obligated to medicate themselves with company-approved stimulants. Are you telling me Black Hole Birdie has been playing clean all these years? Huh, that's impressive. A breach of contract, but impressive. Be plain with me, Inspector. Do you believe Black Hole Birdie killed Helen? It's possible. I'm still investigating my leads. Understood. I appreciate your candor. I'd like you to continue your investigation. Notify me as soon as you're ready to make a formal accusation. By the way, Birdie agreed to stay at the Grand Colon... Oh, no. I appreciate that. I'd rather keep Birdie within the public eye than let him languish in a bar at the docks. I'll make my report of your investigation into Birdie. Do you have anything else for me? I looked into Cedric. Closely, I trust. Tell me what you found. He's a criminal boss. I can't trust anything he says. Smart. Nothing Cedric says in his defense can be taken in good faith. With that in mind, do you think Cedric was responsible for Helen's death? He was torturing a guy at the time of Helen's death. I can't see past that alibi. Fair enough, Inspector. I won't try to influence your judgment any more than I already have. Unfortunately, even I don't have the authority to detain Cedric. His line of work is dangerous, though. There's always a chance for an accident. Sorry to disappoint you, Ludovico. He's alive and well. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I've already lost Dr. Blossom and Constable Keen, but at least Cedric's alive. The universe is a just place. I'll be back. You know, since I've been running around with playing Inspector Gadget, let me just take a look at what my other my other team member's doing. Vicar. The longer we stay here, the more I can feel my mind softening. And that is why I am not talking to you at the moment. Thank you for the reminder. I appreciate that. There's um there's no room service, right? Just asking. She's hungry. She wants food. Even the air in here feels too sweet. Almost sticky. Hmm. All right, so since everyone's complaining, I might as well just leave at this point. Oh, my goodness. Do I really know who actually did it? Hmm. All right, well, I'm about to head out, honestly. See who else I can talk to. What floor would you like to visit? The lobby, please. To the lobby we go! It was the longest walk I've ever had to do. Like, seriously, the longest walk. And I decided to go 
talk to the prophet of probability and I see there's a lot of crazy stuff here like dead bodies it's like so many things are happening all at once And no one is doing enough to explore what's really happening. This is insane. Like, look at this. This guy got hit by this. What the hell is going on? This place is a mess. Look, this guy lost his leg. Um... Okay. Come on, you guys. Let's go. Cedric's name is clear. Well, for this crime, anyhow. I've always liked Sublight. At least they're honest about their dishonesty. I like that. <laughs> What's up? Uh, never mind. Bertie Holcomb couldn't have killed Miss Helen, right? We'll find out. I just don't know if I can believe it. He's got a good heart. He sounded like he was real fond of Miss Helen. I just can't see him hurting her like that. Poor guy. I can't imagine what he's going through right now. By the way, are you two related? Oh boy, I used to get that question back in the veil. I'll tell you what I told everybody else. Black Hole Birdie Holcomb and I are not related. Probably. Hmm, <laughs> we'll talk later. So at this point, my last lead would be the Prophet of Profitability. What the hell? Everything's all empty? Is that bullets? Thank you. I'll take that. I'll take all this too. So, we have an empty loading station. And no one's here, so... This is not promising. Oh, is that hell it? yes! Show me the biggest, baddest wildlife you've got, Eridanos. I'll bring it home on a plaque. This is sublight territory. A tour guide? Okay. I just love the sounds of the cows going moo. Hmm. I wonder if there's any clues. Nothing here. Huh. Nothing here so far. It's, I mean, it makes sense as to why there wasn't any people in the loading dock, but still. I wonder if the Prophet of Probability is alive at this point. Oh, shit, you scared me. She is just standing there drinking her life away. I love it. All right, so we're almost there. This place is pretty nice, I got met. Oh, shit. All right, you guys, you know what to do. Oh, no. Wow, that's amazing. She hammered this creature to death. Like, I am so proud of her. Look at her getting all her strength. Okay, so where is this okay, place? Candy Canyon! I know this place. It's where they did free range fixer. Candy Canyon. I love this. My work wife, if she was at Candy Canyon, she would have a field day. Because she loves candy. 
shut up! Incoming! Oh shit. Ew, did you just spit your snot at me? That is so rude. Whoop his ass. Thank you. That is so nasty. Uh, I'm gonna need my... You know what? Burn, baby, burn! Oh, shit! Oh, it bit me. There you go. Oh, you okay? Bendito. Yeah, I'm burning too. This is bullshit. I hate dealing with these animals because once they spit that nasty acid at you, that's it. Your your health is like decreases so fast. What the hell is this? This is where she lives? Alright, let's go. Hello? Is anyone home? Or are you dead just Captain, like how- What is this place and why is everybody acting so strange? Oh, law. They ain't cannibals, right? Oh my god, that would be so messed up if they were. Wow. This is very, um, homely. Wow, a nice big little tent to herself, of course. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Say no more. Where is it? Where is it? I can't even see anything. Is it really in here or not? Oh. Hold on. Analysis suggests this to be a variety of herbs. Herbs have been uniformly treated with a pungent chemical mix. Warning. Ingesting, smoking, or inserting non-corporation sanctioned substances into your ears may be harmful to your health. Burning these would generate some pretty toxic smoke. Side effects from extended exposure include dizziness, Nausea and unconsciousness, additional likelihood of organ shutdown and or death. Um, well, discrepancy amplifier, how would these most likely be used? Prior analysis suggests these herbs reach peak effectiveness when users burn them and inhale the resulting smoke. Whether or not this increased effectiveness is good for an afflicted individual has yet to be determined. Can you analyze the chemical these herbs are treated with? Analyzing complete. Substance appears to be a mix of industrial solvents and various essential oils. Substances include woolly cow dander remover, sprat oil, and starship surface wax. I'm gonna taste the herbs. Wish me luck. Though the drier herbs are difficult to chew, the flavor is less bitter than you would have expected. It's woodsy, like tripical, with a singe aftertaste. It's actually slightly better tasting than your average can of Saltuna, though so are most boots. Okay. Is there more? Is there more for me to read? Hurry up! Hypothesizing potential side effects from herb consumption. Most likely outcome, decapitation. The what? Slight possibility of calculation error. I really hope so. Um, alright, make a note of it and let's move on. And you know what? I know- My friend, there's no need for that kind of behavior. Excuse me? Are you threatened by me? Fruitful and productive welcome, sister. I had a feeling you would visit me. 
Really? I offer a wide variety of productivity seminars. I hope you'll consider taking one. Ah, but I should remember my manners. To what do I owe the pleasure of the special inspector's arrival? How did you know I was the expector? My disciples come to and from the Grand Colonial, bringing supplies and information. Knowing what happens at the hotel affects my livelihood, after all. With that said, I'd love to involve you in one of my productivity seminars. We should clear you of all those nasty, nasty humors hampering your potential. Hmm. That's so cute. Didn't Halcyon and Helen say you were a hack? Absolutely not. Oh, she's Any best. statements by Ms. Helen about us were blown out of proportion and altered by the media. In fact, she quite recently... Ah, excuse me. I seem to be remembering something that never happened. Oh, really? Whatever the case, I'm sure her speech about us was all a misunderstanding. Hmm. Humors. I don't think I understand. As science has taught us, the body is made up of two things, flesh and humors. These humors are semi-fluids that, when improperly balanced, may cause you to function inadequately. By signing up for my seminars, you can balance these humors for only mildly inordinate and repeat payments. Really? Cancellation is subject to repercussions. Wow, you really are a hack. Something about all this seems fishy. No, I assure you, we all bathe semi-regularly. Semi? That's probably just the compost heap we have our customers. Oh, seminar visitees. Lion. It promotes freeing oneself from one's body. But of course, no one needs to subject themselves to such repercussions if they don't cancel. Regardless, can I interest you in a seminar? Sorry, Prophet. I don't think I can spare the time. I've got a murder to look into. Yes. I understand the pressure of one's employment all too well. We've lately been looking into more ways to bolster the retreat stock of bits. But you needn't worry about how this little conversation is affecting my livelihood, sister. Please, take your time. I'm delighted to extend my desire to aid you, sister. How might I assist? I'm gonna ask you some questions about Halcyon and Helen. Please answer truthfully. Oh? I'm surprised. I wouldn't think the two of us would have much to discuss about her. We may have had some terse interactions before her death, which I most certainly regret. But beyond those, well, never mind. What would you care to know? Where were you at the time of Helen's murder? Why, I've been at the Wilderness Exploitation Reserve for quite some time now, as my disciples can attest. Mm -hmm. In fact, I haven't visited the Colonial since I arrived several weeks ago. <laughs> Bad energies, you understand. You and Helen didn't get along, I hear. I wouldn't necessarily say that. The media tends to exaggerate. I will admit that her remarks about my seminars were rather unfortunate. However, I certainly wouldn't sharpen any sabers over it, if that's what you mean to imply. I only do that when my clients skimp on their bills. Did you contact Helen after you left the Grand Colonial? I did not. She had no interest in my seminars, and I had no interest in attempting to convert a stubborn actress. <laughs> Why would I have had any cause to engage with her further? Let's talk about something else. I hope you now realize that I had nothing to do with Helen's demise. You've got some interesting herbs in here. I'm pleased that you noticed. Excellent eye, sister. The compound they're treated with is my own invention, designed to unlock an individual's true productive potential when burned. I can't say any more. 
trade secrets, you know. They seem toxic. Toxic enough to potentially kill someone. None of my clients have ever complained. So I'm sure they're perfectly safe. Is there anything else? That's all for now. Woo, she got real defensive. Let me just check out her alibi, see if it actually matches. Hello, welcome to the Prophet of Profitability's private prosperity retreat. Stay positive and soon all your humors will be balanced. Least that's what I keep telling myself. Uh, anyway, I'm Aaliyah, Aaliyah Mason. I work as the Prophet's right hand woman. What can I do for you? I was hired to look into Halcyon Helen's murder. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Oh my. Yes, this is important enough for me to delay my bi-hourly self-flagellation. Ask Your away. what? The... Well, have you noticed any unusual behavior in the retreat lately? Well, by and large, no. But something rather odd did happen regarding the Prophet recently. A few hours after our high-profile visitor arrived a couple of days ago, the Prophet asked me to take over sessions for the remainder of the day. At first, I was excited. Thought it was my chance to show her what I could do in charge. But then I saw that she was deeply worried about something. No one saw her until the next day. Where, where were you at the time of the murder? I was here, at the retreat in the company of the other disciples and clients. I rarely have more than a few minutes of alone time. Which is fine, of course. I do what I do in the service of the Prophet. Who will, I'm sure, reward me for my sacrifice? Eventually. The Prophet had some kind of feud with Halcyon Helen, right? Yes, the circumstances there are quite unfortunate. For a time, the Prophet was completely despondent. Even the hot coal walks weren't buoying her spirits as they usually do. However, we recently had a high-profile visitor whose presence seemed to alleviate whatever the Prophet's fears were. Spencer Woolrich? Oh, you must have misheard me. I said high profile, not had profile. Damn. Mr. Woolrich comes by much too often to be worth mentioning. That's all for now. Certainly. Do you know the Prophet well? Of course. I've been studying under her for years. I know each of her techniques more or less by heart, and even have some variations of my own, such as the quintuple daily stomach purges. The what? She's promised me that I'd be allowed to open my own branch of the retreat someday soon. Of course, I've been waiting on someday soon for coming up on four years now. I'm sure it's gonna happen any time now for a positively disciple you sound a little less than enthusiast oh terribly sorry if i gave you that impression i had a cramp it's better now i mean it might be nice if i had a little inclination of whether the prophet appreciated all the cooking and cleaning and hours of meditation i do on a daily basis but whatever she thinks isn't for me to question. I'll do my best to be more chipper. What can you tell me about the retreat? If you felt imbalanced and unproductive, linger in your malaise no longer. We have all the amenities and practices for calming the ill humors strangling your potential. Sit for hours in our sweat house and sweat them out. Or stand amidst burning coals and feel your productive inhibitions burn away. And remember, think positive. Positivity equals productivity equals profitability. <laughs> Goodbye. Actually, before you go, I want to report something suspicious. Oh, I really? noticed the prophets dragging something, a bundle, away from the retreat after that high-profile guest arrived. Normally, I'm the one who does her laundry, so it was strange. Especially because whatever she was dragging seemed oddly... human-shaped. 
Couldn't you have brought this information forward a little earlier? I could have, but I generally don't have the time or energy to leave the reserve to contact anyone. Plus, there's always the possibility that I'm mistaken. The Prophet hasn't been herself lately. But if I misinterpreted the situation and reported her improperly, I'd ruin my chances for opening my own wing of the retreat. You sure it was a body? I think so. Had the right size and shape. I'll look into it. Hmm. And this is the terminal. I've talked with my agents and they've told me that what I said about your seminars, not taking them, actually lost you about 3% of your revenue for the next three months, with future losses projected. When I said I wasn't much interested in attending, I didn't really realize that it hit you quite as hard as it did. Guess that's the price of stardom. Everyone listens a little extra to everything you said. I'm hoping if you've got space that I might be able to attend one of your sessions today as a means of apologizing. I know that notice is short, but I'm hoping you can fit me in without too much inconvenience. And that's from Ruth, aka Halcyon Helen. Um, wa wanted to ask how that mix of herbs I sent you has worked out. I was skeptical at first about using them for meditation purposes, but hell, what do I know about productivity? That said, be sure to remember what I told you. Don't cut the herbs and asymmetrically. Hampers the texture. Don't leave them out in the sun, and for the law's sake, make sure you keep the smoke doses small. Last thing you want is to accidentally send somebody into a coma, or worse, kill them. Be smart, Woodtaker. The other attendees of tripling profits through transcendentationalism, and I have reconsorry, I'm having a lazy mouth moment. Reconvinced, and we're all in agreement. Your seminars are simply top notch. We've seen a zero. Sorry, we've seen a 0.5 increase in each of our businesses in total profits since we attended your seminar together. Of course, with the price of materials, shipping, and other costs involved, it boils down to more of a 0.1% increase. But an increase isn't an increase. If you ever decide to visit the Grand Colonial, you simply must let us purchase you a round of drinks. Thanks to you, we certainly have the bits for it. At this point, I might as well just look for this body, see what's up. If there is a body. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. A semi-recent set of tracks in the dirt stands out from the dead leaves and those made by passing creatures. Identifying human footprints leading out into the wilderness. It is unusual for productivity disciples to wander more than a few feet from the camp. Are they... Helen's? Scanning. No. Helen's distinctive shoe size, not found. Judging by footprint depressions and shoe size, these prints were either made by the Prophet of Profitability or Adjutant Sophia Akande. Error. Recalibrating. These footprints were made by the Prophet of Profitability. All right. Oh, I see something. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Detected additional tracks belonging to the prophet of profitability. Oh my goodness, she was, she was right. She was dragging something. Question is, what was it? Timeline discrepancy detected additional tracks belonging to the prophet of profitability. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Detected additional tracks belonging to the Prophet of Profitability. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Judging by the shape of this indentation in the dirt, a person of medium height and build laid here for a number of hours, scanning for other details. Only additional signs of disturbance are a few marks in the dirt. Corpses don't get up and walk away, and there's no evidence of the body being torn apart. Agreed. Likely theory. 
individual injured was unconscious, not dead, and walked away after awakening. Hmm. Could could be this was specifically set up to throw us off the trail. Let's be careful. All right. Listen up. You better not be bullshitting me because I actually found something. Welcome back, sister. Stop calling me sister. I'm delighted to extend my desire to aid you, sister. How might I assist? Huh, let's see if you will. Someone said they saw you dragging a human-shaped lump into your yurt. Who said that? I'll be sure to give them a special seminar on not needlessly implicating the person who puts food on their table. It was a bundle of clothing, sister. Even productivity geniuses need to do laundry from time to time. You, you think I'm stupid. Huh. The dirt implant that I found outside suggests a heavier load being dragged, like a body. I'd say that I have a lot of clothing, but I think you already know that we prophets only have a moderate amount of worldly possessions. I had a visitor, yes, but as it turned out, some of my productivity techniques were too much for them. I had to drag them out by hand, but their peers came and collected them shortly thereafter. I'm sure whichever attendee it was is perfectly safe now. You said you had no further interaction with Helen before her death, right? Yes, that's correct. She made it clear that my seminars were of no interest to her. I saw the message from Helen on your terminal about attending a session. Well, I suppose that does complicate things. Whatever the case, I didn't care to mention Helen's change in decision because she never showed up. I don't see how it matters. I followed your trail to where you dumped something in the wilderness. Oh, really? What did you find there? What did I dump? There was nothing there, but by its proportions, I'll say a body. Clever work, Inspector. It seems even I can't slide my way out of the trap you've so intricately weaved. I admit it. I killed Helen. By mistake. Huh. Helen changed her mind and wanted to attend one of my sessions. I, knowing the importance of the seminar, desired to truly galvanize her. Though not to stop her heart. So when it came time, I chose to double Helen's dosage of productivity-enhancing herbs. I left her to meditate, and when I returned, she was dead. After that, I entered a less-than-coherent state. One of my disciples, it seems, witnessed me as I dragged Helen's body out into the wilderness. Hmm. Wow, that's crazy. She met killing her. Wow. You sure Helen was dead? I'm no medical professional, but that certainly seemed the case. Usually my customers at least writhe or mumble after a session. My productivity enhancing herbs typically do induce sluggishness, but I suppose they must have been enough to do her in if her constitution was truly that weak. Did you shoot the body at any time? Laws, no. I hate guns. If I ever wanted to kill someone on purpose, I would have used a blunt weapon. Nothing quite like clubbing someone over the head. The wilderness? You didn't dump the body at the Grand Colonial? Do you jest? The guests at the Colonial eat no shortage of strange things, but I think corpses are perhaps too strange. The creatures of the wilderness are much less picky. Besides, the hotel is ridiculously far. I couldn't have made it all that way without someone realizing I was dragging a corpse. This is all a bit strange, but I'm still inclined to believe you killed Halcyon and Helen. And here I was, beginning to think you wouldn't even accuse me of anything. That is, you found me out, Inspector. Take me away. 
what? What? That's it? Not going to plea for mercy or try to argue with me? Well, there's obviously no use trying to push against the cosmic flow. And freedom poses many more risks than being safe in prison. My many enemies would salivate at the thought of how they could use this to blackmail me out of my productivity secrets. Huh. Well, whether... All right. All right, then. Hopefully, you'll find your way to a prison cell by day's end. Yes. One step ahead as always, shadowy corporate figures. She you'll is... You'll never get my secrets. Crazy. Never. Crazy as hell. Thank you for watching this episode. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.